Hey, welcome to High 45, a, dis a, <laughs> a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Gray. Saved. Yes. Saved. You did. Uh, this week... James Squire. Salitos. Mm. Uh, image manipulation software makes morphing quicker. Mm. A way to delete things in real time. Um, a really cool sort of intro to the Singularity University on 60 Minutes in New Zealand. Cool. And a new way to view the world. And uh, Benoit... Benoit? Mendelbrot. I think so. Died. We have to mention that. He's cool. He does. So I... Yeah, I'll, I'll start with this one then. Um, this is on Fizzorg, and also on Curseful AI. Um, there, there's this software where you can actually, um, in... I don't think it's real time, but, but in post-production, where you can literally just um, decide how tall you want a person to be, how short, how fat, how muscular, how, you know, whatever. And you just drag, literally drag a slider, and it changes the, the video. Cool. So they, they've got a simple ones of like, you know, a guy, uh, like it's like a Baywatch scene, and they do like a guy, you know, normally running, and then they just beef up his muscles a bit. Yeah. And it, it doesn't, like, you can't tell it's being changed at all. And this is just pretty cool. Um, I think the way they did it is they had a whole bunch of different models that they just worked out, like tall, skinny, and whatever, and then they just added that all into the software with, I'm guessing, a lot of intelligent algorithms behind the scenes. Yeah. But this is kind of crazy, because, I mean, <laughs> you can't really trust any sort of video anymore. If this software well, is going to be... the same way exact as pictures and all of that, you can't actually trust uh, pictures because they're like, oh, it's Photoshop and all that. Oh, I can detect it, but it'll be the exact same for videos yeah. now. People are like, oh, well, it's been actually modified. Well, you can't. A lot of the Photoshop stuff you can't detect. No, well, that's it. You really it's, can't. It's so good. And, yeah, it's going to be the same with video. It's just pretty crazy. Which is, it's always been in the hand of the professionals. Like, I mean, most videos now and all of that is you, uh, any movies or any, like, you know, series or all of that, that's always heavily ed edited, like, you know, post-production. But if yeah. this can make it simple, then it'll be the exact same way. Yeah. I mean, it's just a natural trend going that way that, I mean, we're making reality less real, that what you see is not always the truth. And this is just a nice, easy way to do it. And what you see is all that is merely what your brain tells you you see. Very true. So who do you trust? <laughs> yeah. Your entire, your entire, you know, worldview is down to neurons. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. But well, that, that kind of uh, leads on to my yeah. story with, uh, they've got this uh, awesome software now. Uh, a university, I think it was Illinois. I'm not sure. I have to have to check that out. Um, where you could just have like a camera overlaying an object, and so let's just say it's a, a good example in the video it was a sink, and the sink had its drain, you know, at the bottom with a whole white sink. And what you do is you just put, say, the iPad, iPad, great example. You just have the video going over the top, and you just look at it. a Windows tablet. Oh, either one. But what you do is you just have the like the the hole at the bottom. What the software would do would actually take it away and put like you know the the sink, the oh, I forget what the that things called but you know just make it all white go over the top so in real life there's a sinkhole there with the tablet over the top it's totally out and no matter how you look at it wherever you position the tablet it's yeah. just the same it's great it's awesome it's pretty, i think it's literally just you hold it up circle the object you want to delete yeah and then it just um it puts it over the top like content where fill yeah. in the latest photoshop it's really fantastic but the, the thing was it, was it was real time yeah so you're on actually looking through something you, i mean a tablet is just a moment of course you can mm move that up towards glasses, which you obviously will do. It's just the beginning of Photoshop yeah. features on video, again, in another easy to use fashion. Like this was in real time, the actual content, uh, the manipulation of say like body muscle yeah, and all of that isn't real time yet. Yeah. But of course, in time, that can actually be done in, yeah. well, real time. Especially with the glasses, which there's so much talk about it still, like it has it's going to hit the crescendo where the, the peak where it's just like, okay, we have to fucking make yeah. these. Yeah, everyone knows <laughs> it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when really. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you put them into the glasses and then, you know, if, if you want to just see, you know, hot, beautiful, skinny people all the time, you could or... Yeah, you can just look at people, do it automatically. I mean, that's where it works in brilliantly with it. Yeah. Which is kind of sweet. Pretty damn awesome. Yeah. So what's your next story? Um, it's just a piece done by the 60 Minutes in New Zealand on the right. singularity, exponential technology and um, the singularity university. It's got, right. uh, it's got interviews with uh, the um, sort of... He's not really president anymore because they just elected a new president since he married university. Right. Anyway, I'm Peter Diamandis, mm -hmm. that guy. Um, and yeah, it just it's a really good. It's 14 minutes. It's really worth watching. Like it's it's your mainstream type thing. It's it's hey, what's the thing already? Why are they doing this? Oh man, this is crazy. This is happening. So well, it is 60 minutes, so you know. yeah. 
But I mean, it, it's a really, really good intro piece for people who... You know those people you, you argue with about all this stuff, like, you know, oh, in 10, just, 20 years, it's, we're going to be at this level because it's exponential. And they're like, that's, oh, what, 10 yeah, years? Yeah, just discussing it. It's like when you, you say that, the uh, the idea and stuff, it's, it's a little bit better than saying that, well, computers back then were slow and now they're a little bit faster. It's just predicting along that trend. Yeah. I mean, so, the idea that the actual singularity is very hard for people to grasp or understand. Yeah. Well, yeah, you hate the uh, term. I, I don't <laughs> like the term of singularity. I, 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 think it's, I think it's a little bit silly. I think it's always going to be very slow going through. Like, we can look back maybe 100 years from now and say that was the point, but as we live through it, it's not going to be the singularity. Yeah, it'll be like a 20, 30-year period. Yeah. Which is what the next 20, 30 years are meant to be. Well, yeah. But yeah, um, if you've got any friends who, you know, kind of uh, maybe sort of lean towards ideas of the singularity like trying to get their head around it just send them this it's a good intro piece then that'll get them inspired cool there's lots of like you know I'll have to watch it I haven't actually seen this one so it actually it looks pretty cool yeah As uh, I did do a miss uh, miss thing when I actually looked at it I thought it was an hour long introduction to the singularity <laughs> What's that? I saw I that pop up on my feeds and I was like oh yeah no I, I think I'm okay I'll definitely watch that yeah nah, nah not <laughs> for me I was like yep yeah, no what? I can do something else with it now but a 14 minute thing like looks fantastic. I'd totally do that. It just means my attention span has like totally gone to shit. <laughs> I mean, ADD, oh my God. Everyone is now with it because of the net. ADD is now on everyone in the population, I swear. Yeah, we're gonna shout quick. Yeah, that's it. You gotta speak faster and faster. Sure, sure, sure. We do pretty, pretty well. It was about articles of course. Just saying. Failing. Yeah, articles, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys do it, but I do, I definitely know that I do it. Um, if you see an article goes for say like five pages, do you actually read all five or do you like read the first one and go, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then you look for the rest and you're like, well, yeah. Or you go to the last mm. page and look for the conclusion. Yeah. It's like, I so what did they think of it? Uh, what? one thing that was funny today on, um, on Reddit, uh, which I tend to be a lot of the places where a lot of my stories come from. Uh, there was this article by the onion about buying socks for bicycling and all of that. And everyone was like, Oh my God, this is the funniest article right. ever. I read three paragraphs. And I was like, Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Then I checked the comments for Reddit and the comments for Reddit said, uh, yeah, it was so fantastic. That last paragraph at the end just totally threw me. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't believe I only just read the last paragraph at the end and all of that. And I was like, wait a minute. So I went back and checked it and the article developed into an orgy. So. <laughs> I should actually read articles more. You should read the New York Times more because the article could develop into an orgy and don't get me wrong, it was fucking hot. Why haven't you got to log in to, to read the New York Times? No, no, not normal. Well, I mean, are so, you logged into that now? No, it isn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure after a few days they make you have to log in sometimes. Maybe. I'm not sure. Most of them, I, I don't visit the New York Times that often, but I get linked to it. Okay, so basically you don't have to log in. But yeah, read articles to the end because it could be an orgy. That is the moral of the story and that is what you should pick <laughs> up from this. I mean, it is important. Who doesn't miss an orgy? But shall I mention this one now? Because then we can finish on that. And then yeah, we, okay. Yeah. Um, Benoit Mandelbrot has died. He's... Who is he? It? <laughs> who is he? Fuck you. <laughs> um, he is like a really famous mathematician. He, he essentially invented the fractal. Like invented the term fractal. He... He um, came up with the Mandelbrot set, oh, yeah. um, which is, you know, Z squared is equals Z plus, no, Z equals Z plus squared plus C, sorry. Um, and it's just, yeah, he died last Thursday, he was 85 in Cambridge, and it's just really sad, because this dude, I swear, like, fractals, it's just, it's an incredible, incredible shift in mathematics, I think. Like, so much of our world right now is built on Newtonian mathematics. Like the whole principles that, you know, everything's perfect, everything's logical, you know, straight, solid lines. And all our technology really is built off those principles from, you know, like four, five, six hundred years ago. But the fractal and fractal mathematics um, and, you know, chaos theory and all that sort of stuff, it kind of describes the what the world actually is more, more mm -hmm. accurately. And I mean, you look for fractals in nature and they're freaking everywhere. Like there is fractals in like, you know... The, your patterns on your hands, in your brain, our brain's fractal, the internet is fractal, I mean, plants are fractal, DNA code, I actually read a paper recently where they just, they did prove that DNA code is fractal. Alright. Um, I, I just read through that recently, um, they looked at all the codons and the chromosomes and worked out there is a fractal, sort of Fibonacci type, golden ratio yeah. thing in there. Um, proportions are all golden ratio, it's just, yeah, golden ratio, Fibonacci numbers, fractals, they're all tied together, even the universe is fractal. 
Yeah. I mean, well, it all comes from a single... I mean, yeah. fractals pretty much describe it going through. I mean, fractals you see everywhere. It is fantastic. Yeah. We're not taught it in school. I mean, it's all Newtonian it's mathematics, crazy. as you were saying. Well, no, it's, it's not really. Like, you can't understand why... Like, fractals are so hard to actually wrap your head around. I mean, to do stuff in that way is hard. But I, I guess what really it comes down to is perceiving... Like, when you actually look at, if you're taught only Newtonian mathematics and you're told that the entire world works on mathematics, mathematics is the, yeah. the language of the universe, then you think they're Newtonian mathematics, that you can predict everything, you can go through that way. Like, uh, I remember my final story in Year 12 English was about predicting the universe and what would happen then. Determinism, very yeah. much so. And then you look at, uh, say, fractals, and when I start to actually look more into that, you start to realize that, wow, okay, it's more of a fractal-based universe where... Technically, it is possible to predict, but it's not in that same way. It's it's very you you can't ever predict it because of the uncertainty and yeah. everything going there. You need everything to be precise. Yeah, which you makes can it never have. You, well, yeah, unless you're traveling back in time, and that causes a whole host of other problems. So if you're watching this, don't <laughs> don't travel back in time. You just kind of yeah, you'll piss bosses. everyone off, like really. <laughs> Well, there's also Please the um, there's Stephen Wolf from Australia. So that's the other thing I want to mention. He's trying to travel back in time. No, Stephen. He Wolf. really should. <laughs> like, I mean, like Wolf from Alpha back in like you know the 19th century would just annoy people. I think it's like, well, congratulations, you've got a lovely little machine that can solve it, uh, solve problems. It'd become like a sideshow. It would. People it would pay money to try and battle it. And like go, the oh. the Mechanical Turk. Just watch QI tonight. I'll learn about <laughs> yeah. Mechanical Turk solving chess problems. Yeah. But um, I think Wolf from Alpha traveling back in time. Yeah, but well, yeah, he's, me off. he's working on um traveling back in time. He had this no, he had this really good paper talking about how he's he's um he's calling it fuck, what was he calling it? a new kind of science. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, just, that, he's, yeah, he's, he's giving one. his own term to yeah. It's that, we we spoke about that before on High Forty Five about his talk. Yeah. One of the big talks you should watch if you do actually want to get into a lot of this stuff and pre it's pretty much one of the main things that have had that's blown my mind in the past while. Like really watch his talk about a new kind of science. Yeah. Um, I forget where it was. But it, it, it is it's essentially saying um, how fractals sort of move in... They're, they're computationally irreducible. So you can't really go backwards because it beca it creates infinite complexity in so little moves. Like by, you know, the reiterative process. But um, I think fractals, like, like... Like Newtonian physics, Newtonian mathematics, it was like 400 plus years ago. I think fractals are only just starting... To be understood and we're just only really just starting to actually find applications for it mm. like imagine like you know biotechnology and uh, neuroscience and actually building ai using fractal mathematics as some kind of basis for those algorithms and that process yeah like that hasn't really been done the, the best thing that fractals are used for at the moment is like image compression and um it's like creating you know security and creating like you know scenes in uh, games really quickly and like yeah. uh, some people are just starting now to work on like um, using them in solar cells and stuff. They're in everyone's mobile phone. We have fractal antennas in everyone's mobile phone that can pick up all the different band waves that you need. Um, so there's tons and tons of uses. I just think someone needs to, people need to keep really, really researching because there is a lot more applications that just have not been found that will just blow our fucking something off. I do like blowing fucking something off. It is fun. Happens a lot, really. You, you tie those two verbs together, it works with anything. It does, it does. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I'm, that, that... I'm looking at our local Greens candidate and it's not pleasurable, <laughs> not pleasurable at all. So yeah, anyway, Ben Mandelbrot's died. At... 85, he had a good life. He impacted the human psyche. He impacted a lot of stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, well, he had to fight. Kudos to Mandelbrot. He had to really, really fight when he first brought it out because yeah. people were just like, Fuck that, fractals, that's just weird. That's not how math works. No, well, it was unpredictable, which is not what you want. Yeah.